we start with introducing the first speaker, Joachim Borras, head archivist of Barcelona City Council, a graduate in geography and history from the University of Barcelona with a master's degree in archive management from the Autonomous University of Barcelona. He has devoted a substantial part of his career to t teaching archive and document management in different universities and public administrations. Specifically, he has been a member of the team teaching the master's degree in archive management at the Autonomous University of Barcelona and the Rovira y Virgili University of Tarragona and has collaborated with different universities in Spain, including the Carlos III University of Madrid, the Public University of Navarra, University of Seville, and the National Distance Education University. He has also published in several specialist journals and has undertaken studies into the recent evolution of public administration, archives, and document management. He is currently the head archivist for, for Barcelona City Council, where he manages the municipal filing system, which combines the archival policies of more than 20 centers and their corresponding documentary heritage access and dissemination services. He has been a member for teaching and secretary of the Association of Archivists, Document Managers of Catalonia, and a founding member of the Conference of Spanish University Archivists, positions from which he has taken part in various executive committees and working groups. He is currently a member of the Local Administration Archives Working Committee. In the international sphere, he has been part of the Board of Directors of the University Archives Section of the International Council of Archives and has participated directly in international cooperation projects with the Pontifical Catholic University of Peru, Cuban universities, and other projects related to Latin American cities. He is also a member of the plenary for street nomenclature and the study of memorial signposting of significant places in Barcelona and the advisory council for the transparency of Barcelona City Council. Today he will speak about the archives of the Olympic Games, the case of Barcelona in 1992. Please, Joaquin. Thank you very much. Buona tarda. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here today, for inviting me to this first international seminar of the ICA SPL. And I would also like to thank my friends and colleagues, Joan Colomé, Fina Sola, Joan Boadas, and all the citizens of Girona, because I've always felt very welcome in this city. And additionally, in this case, I would like to share with you the experience of the Municipal Archive of Barcelona and the preservation of the Olympic records. And I would also like to present the outcomes of this experience. Not just to share with you a very positive experience, but also because I think it's important to share also the barriers that we face, and I think it's very important to have today our colleagues from the London Metropolitan Archive who are much more advanced in this type of task. And before anything, I would like to thank my colleagues particularly Montserrat Beltran, who is the director of the Contemporary Archive, and Jordi Asens, who is the head of the Photographic Archives of Barcelona. Before we were talking about property rights, this is a very famous image of the Olympic Games in Barcelona. And then I would also like to talk about some of the problems that we have with the copyright of all these images. The Municipal Archive of Barcelona gathers, as many of you know, the 
files and records, files and records that have a strong identity and that are very important for the city. And within the area of sports. In our city council, in the Barcelona City Council, we also have many、uh, documents. And today we are going to be talking about all those records and collections that have to do with the Olympic Games that were related to the candidacy of Barcelona for the Olympic Games and. The time it hosted the Olympic Games. I'm not just going to refer to the sports aspect and the sports perspective, but I will also refer to the important transformation of the city due to the Olympic Games because Barcelona was modernized. There is an A、before and after of the Olympic Games in Barcelona, not just from a sports perspective, but also from a cultural and tourism dimension, the consequences of which we are experiencing today. The archives of the Olympic Games are. Today, in the municipal archive of Barcelona, and the very often when we talk about the archive, we're not just talking about one single archive. Right now, it's a system of archives that is. Spread out through over twenty centers with regard to the Olympic Games documents, we had. The documents in the municipal archive, in the photographic archive, but also in the historic archive that also preserves posters, signs, and other objects related to the Olympic Games and other centers. As for the background, we have to say. That in Barcelona, as you know, we had this race as a candidate for the Olympic Games, and it was chosen for the 1992 Olympic Games in 1986. And the Olympic Committee had a first project in 1982 that established. The project for this archive, and I should also mention that the city council in 1990 approved to deposit the documents of the Olympic Games. Once completed the Olympic Games, that they should be deposited in the municipal archive, and we have this first document, a steering plan. And the、uh, documents had to be in the municipal archive of Barcelona, and there should be some guidelines applied to different departments. And in this document, they mention the creation of. Uh, documentation service. The goal of which was to be a documentation center, but additionally, it had the goal of collecting all these records and files and documents. However, it didn't fulfill completely its task because some criteria were created. But the criteria weren't fully met. It was not possible to create a wholly integrated system for the management of the documents, and the records of the Olympic Games were preserved after. Creating the Olympic Barcelona Foundation after the Olympic Games in the foundation, they deposited all the documents that were produced during the games, with the goal of keeping them in the municipal archive and. The first transfer of documents took place in 1993. Throughout 
different years based on several agreements. And in 2007, we had the, the ultimate transfer when the foundation had passed all the relevant audits and at that moment the documentation all the documentation was transferred to the municipal archive to the contemporary municipal archive and the images the photographs were transferred to the photographic archive and in that agreement of 2007 and this is something that's still pending today. There are some fixed images and video images of that have been left at the Olympic Museum because according to the agreement, not until all the photographs were digitalized and not until all video images were digitalized, they wouldn't be transferred to the photographic archive. And after 14 years, we are still stuck with this. Then we have the infrastructures and the documentation of all these buildings that be, that came from the Hulsa collection and this was based on several agreements between Hulsa, this fund, and the city council and this was important because there was this clear goal of classifying, archiving, and transferring the documentation after <coughs> the Olympic Games. So all this was transferred to the Municipal Archive in Barcelona. In 1995, there was an agreement signed with the Olympic Holding and the City Council. So all this documentation was transferred to the two centers I mentioned before. And you know that there were other companies involved in the building of the buildings and infrastructures such as Bosa and in Bursa that had different areas of work in the transformation, urban transformation of the city in the Montjuic area, in the ring roads, the Baldebron neighborhood and there was this other company, I've just mentioned Bosa, that also produced a large amount of documentation. Let me describe what all these collections of documentation are made of. We have the collection of the Olympic Committee, the organizing Olympic Committee of the Barcelona 92 games, that's the COP 92, and it includes management and administrative documentation. We're talking about 541 meters of documentation, and the photographic archive has about 1,300 photographs of the competitions. Obviously, here we are still lacking a lot of documentation that is still in the archives of the museum. As I mentioned before, we started in 1993 with the archiving of the documents and in 2007 all the documents were finally archived. The contents of this source of documentation is, as I said, administrative documents that refer to the activities of the organizing committee of the Olympic Games. And this is structured through different uh, sections, internal sections, the administrative section, the accommodation, the Olympic family, commercial documents, and so on and the photographic documents are mainly in the photographic archives 
and they are many from the Olympic volunteers. We have the volunteers that had play, that played a very important role in the Olympic Games in Barcelona. And Holsa, the Olympic holding, has a very valuable collection of documents and it's all been entered into the municipal archive and it has data from 1985 to 1993 and we have maps we're talking about 660 meters of text documents and 49 cartographic documents and we also have 265 photographs of Aumsa then we have the company Impusa with 25,000 photographs and then there was a company 63,000 photographs and we have 91 video clips and in this case, most of the documentation refers to the urban infrastructures, the sports facilities and sports buildings and other buildings created for the Olympic Games of Barcelona. This is important because this is one of the first times that we have all this urban documentation that transforms the whole city and on the one hand we have the documentation from the Olympic Organizing Committee and also the documentation coming from the holding, the Olympic holding, HOSA and we also have the Cultural Olympics we have this collection as well. In this case, we're talking about documents that were produced regarding the promotion of the city of Barcelona in the setting of uh, the cultural aspects and the contemporary municipal archive and the photographic archive gathered an important part of all these files and records. In the case of the photographic archive, we had many photographies coming from the technical department of the Barcelona City Council, and then we also have management and administrative documents that have quite a large volume. We carried out a task of having specific inventories made and we had some archiving tools that from the very beginning allowed us to treat this documentation properly. And First of all now, I would like to speak not just about this wealth of documents that we have, priceless documents, but I would also like to assess what are the advantages of this archiving operation. And I'm also going to be critical with some elements that we believe should have been better the advantages, the benefits are obvious of having this complete archive and it wouldn't have been possible to preserve all these documents if the city council had not approved this operation that was led by the municipal archive and this also ensured the basis for the preservation of all these documents from their origin 
and we were also very interested in applying assessment policies and access policies to the documents. In the agreements that we signed with the companies, with the organizing committee, we always stated that all these documents had to go through a classifying process because we could not just preserve all the documentation. In any case, it's worth noting that the integration of all these collections had already some previous experience. For example, when we had the Universal Exhibition at the city in 1888 or the International Exhibition of 1929. For example, in afterwards we had the 2003 Police and Firefighter Olympic World Games, and then we had the Forum of Cultures in 2004. And this archive has also gathered information of uh, recent events such as the terror attacks of last year in 2017 or the elections, the referendum of the 1st of October in Barcelona. Another benefit, therefore, <coughs> is the possibility of having some best practices and the lessons we have learned. First lesson, the archive should always be active and present in society. We shouldn't wait for the documents to reach the archive, but we should be proactive. And even before the candidacy of Barcelona 92 was final, we had already started an action to preserve all those documents. And another benefit is the fact that all these uh, records had to be properly assessed. And, and at the City Council, we had a, an assessment committee to assess the documents. And in 2010, we decided to eliminate some documents that were related to financial data such as invoices of suppliers for the Barcelona Olympic Games as this documents came from the Barcelona Olympic Foundation we had to manage it in a specific way and I would mm -hmm. highlight that in my experience, which are the critical point which has hasn't worked too well, and perhaps um, in the case of my colleague uh, from London went better. We detected that there was a poor treatment of the collections that were that entered the archive. As I've told you, we had some basis, some terms and conditions where they should have like a previous treatment for entering or for um, being part of the information. So the reality is that this didn't happen, um, probably because this archive service from the COP or the Olympic Committee couldn't uh, give this integral or thorough treatment of documents. Second, I think that there was an, an even collection of uh, texts between the closing and liquidation of assets. There was like a year period and well, we, we just suffered uh, about that. And also in 1992, um, databases or um, information systems or information uh, applications didn't have electronic documents but we would have liked to access to this material that well we didn't have access to and 
these documents were not transferred. So that at times it would have been very useful to relate with text documents that we had. As well, there was an uneven and collection of still images and moving images, which is still pending. And this is an element that in our case has not been well managed, especially because if we wait for everything to be digitized, they will never enter the archive. And I insist it's better for this to be in the archive and when the uh, digitization exists we will treat it as with the rest of documents. The other uh, thing are the expectations of access and consultation of the collection and in 2007 we said that the, all the citizens could access them but uh, if the inventory were not full, if there are many doubts and a lot of documents that needed to be organized, well, mm, fortunately, we didn't have a, a, a great amount of researches, but I don't think we were especially accurate in that respect. We also lack a lot of information about the origin and value of the collection. There was like a too great a distance uh, um, between producers <coughs> and also uh, the difficulty in the management of copyrights, especially for televisions. The rest of documents, of course, with images and photographs that were transferred, um, where we've so been solving these weaknesses, but TV images and other visual images, uh, well, we are having more problems. And it is true that the amounts they ask for, the money they ask for, is very high. So, and well, just uh, about to finish, I would like to talk about some challenges that, that I put on the table so that later someone thinks that we could discuss. Which are the challenges for international organizations? First of all, that there should be some ruling uh, instruments, some protocols and agreements between the the um, International Committee on Archives and the section of uh, Sports Act Archives so that this information is preserved in archives, so that these collections are preserved. In these international entities, there should be some agreements or some commitment to obtain resources and uh, proper funding. There should be some agreements where there's a part of the organization that needs to be invested in the managing and custody of documents. Uh, all these agreements should be expanded to digital platforms and television to guarantee the safeguarding of the collections and to agree on the maximum uh, cooperation because we know that it's very <coughs> difficult to obtain rights for a minute of uh, filming and also these agreements should include, if possible, the public and private organization that take part in Olympic Games. Which would be the challenges for organizing cities of Olympic Games? So here every city should have um, a, a governance model for information with archivists and the creation of a appropriate structure that act on the documents that are being produced. That is, cities should have a very clear idea that this model should be established as the model of Barcelona with a series of departments and they should have been more resolute for the creation of a department of archives to take care of the document management from the very beginning. It's not a service or a, a residual department, like a terminal department, but from the very beginning, it should be a department having uh, authority on this matter. And also today, to take care of image and copyright management for all digital TVs on digital platform. But there are also um, challenges for 
municipal archives or metropolitan archives uh, that are the ones that belong to the cities organizing Olympic Games. So the city should be led by um, the archives, the municipal archives. So the same as at, th that at the time, the municipal archive of Barcelona was the one that set some guidelines. So this should be normal in all processes of uh, cities organizing Olympic Games. The archives should contribute with uh, transparency and accessibility criteria to the information from the very beginning. And I think that the, the one a challenge for all of us, uh, the encouraging or fostering the communication and dissemination of the collection. I will show you some resources that we prepared if we have time. And as professionals, we should, it, it's like this collection, so document generated by Olympic Games are dealt with by the right professional, that is archivists and document manager. And we should also seek the cooperation of all of different professionals from the culture environment, such as the museums or heritage professionals. We have to cooperate with them because they also have a part of the collections. And to have as reference the, the International Archive Council for Sports to guide professionals and then also to something that happened among colleagues which is the management of knowledge. All cities who have been Olympic seats have always tried as much as possible to transfer the knowledge to cities and archives that are, have organized Olympic Games and I think this has been very beneficial to all of us. And just to finish, just I just want you to see an example of three resources or three tools of dissemination. First, the online catalog, and in this case, it's the well, the the catalog where we have all the documents. Then different web page from the photograph archive which has a lot of information related to the Olympic Games and uh, an experience that I don't know if it's going to work that for the 20th anniversary of the Olympic Games in Barcelona we I don't know whether it works does it work we made a resource which has, was the contribution of the archive in which we had a sample of these documents of the impact uh, well I well I can see this video of the it could be like all the areas we see all these areas in the city where there was in this case a transformation and there are photographs videos I'm sorry but I'm, I don't know, it's not connecting. Okay, well, it, it, this is what I wanted to show you. But, well, you have to believe me, I mean, it works. I've, I've seen it working, you know, I've seen it at work. I can see it uh, in my laptop, but I can see it on, on the screen. Well, this is some work that was carried out with a group of historians, anthropologists. There was a lot of, a a lot of task of images of the city. <coughs> also, it was also very interesting to see the photographs that were gathered from before and after. Oh, here, here they are. Yeah, from here. So, can you see? This is Barcelona 92 working visit or working progress visit. The impact on the city, you see what 
was the areas of of the photographs at the time we made a choice of photographs and cartography and with documents this is the Olympic port apart from that we have this mirage which is an interactive part where you can see well I think it's going to be very difficult to show it here can you see it how it was and the part of the bypass of Barcelona in the area of the building and there was some work done with images and a series of interviews with people or celebrities from the time architects, photograph photographers, journalists, historians, etc. Uh, who were interviewed um, about what the Olympic Games had meant for them and one of the videos too that was became famous with an acceleration uh, like a time lapse of the building of different areas of the city this was the contribution of the archive to the 20th anniversary of the Olympic Games then there's been the 25th anniversary but we didn't do much but yes, we, we, we did want to celebrate the 20th and we just made our own contribution with this web that is still available to everyone on the web. So thank you very much.